more on tectites, more on tectites. You can never get enough on tectites. No, tectites occur as usually embedded in soil. Uh, one is most of them are geologically young. And there's perhaps a reason for that. Well, there's a reason for everything, but the reason is probably because they're made of glass. And glass is not geologically stable over long periods of time. It breaks down or it de what is known as devitrifies and becomes crystalline. And when it becomes crystalline, it becomes like ordinary rock, uh, loses a glassy state, and um, uh, wouldn't really be noticed by most people, for one thing. And there's probably tectites that existed in the deep geologic past, but they're no longer glass, so they're not noticed. But no, tectites are, for the most part, are geologically young. Uh, the most common ones, and the ones you normally see at rock shows and in collections of museums and such, are tectites known as Indochinites. They um, are named after Indochina, which is the old name for Vietnam. And uh, they occur not only in uh, Vietnam, but they occur in a large part of China. They occur uh, south of China in some areas, in some small islands in the Indian Ocean. And some say that the tectites found in Australia are uh, uh, Indochinites, but they look different. They look like little buttons or look like little glass pills. But uh, the majority of tectites you see are Indochinites. And it's of interest that um, a number of these uh, came out of the Vietnam War. In fact, I, I'm uh, probably upset some people to say this, but I think the only really good thing that came out of the Vietnam War was the quantity of, of uh, uh, tectites, of uh, uh, Indochinites that were unearthed by saturated bombing around the town of Dalat. And uh, I think about 1976, they did a, a extensive amount of saturated bombing that produced large numbers of craters. And when it rained, out of these craters appeared a large number of tectites, which were uh, already known by the, the locals. And they capitalized on this. And uh, they found their way to Tucson, the, the big rock show in Tucson, Arizona, and many other big rock shows around the country, and became widely distributed. And um, it's... Uh, uh, one of the reasons, one of uh, a number of reasons, one is that uh, tectites do cover a large area of the planet, but also large numbers of them were uncovered by that saturated bombing, and they found their way into uh, uh, the rock hounds and geologists and people with a curiosity about tectites. Um, another occurrence of uh, similar black glass tectites are known as Philippineites, and they uh, like. Indochinites, they show a, um, they show a, um, uh, what is known as an ablation surface. It's a surface produced by uh, entry into the atmosphere and vaporization of, of material as they slow down into the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere, and it produces these little dimples that you see on the uh, surface of this tectite that I'm showing, and uh, they. Um, are, are very characteristic of tectites. Um, also, um, Indochinites and Philippinites are probably the, some of the geologi geologically youngest tectites. Perhaps they're only a few million years old. <clears throat> they're not of any great geologic age. Actually, the uh, tectite fields of the greatest age are found in North America. Uh, there's um, what are known as Texas tectites or bediocytes, named after um, uh, Badias County, Texas, and uh, these are peculiar in that they are um, almost very light gray. They're not really, they look black till you shine a light through them. And when you do that, you see that they're made out of gray glass. And the gray glass is, um, uh, um, well, it's glass, like all tectites, but these are considered uh, to have come out of clay beds that are about 40 million years old. And so um, having coming out of uh, clay beds that you're capable of measuring by fossils that are found in that clay, um, these are much, much older than the uh, tectites found in uh, Asia, uh, particularly uh, the Indochinites and the Philippinites. And um, they uh, are believed to be around 40 or 45 million years old. They come out of what's known as the Wilcox Formation. It's Eocene in age, which puts it at about uh, 45 million years. And a related series of tectites 
but they're different looking than the bediocytes are known as jargitectites, which are kind of greenish. And um, these also come out of clay beds that are about 45, 40 to 45 million years old, known as the Wilcox Formation. And some say that they came from the same source, and that source is around Chesapeake Bay. There is evidence that there is an uh, impact site. Uh, in fact, Chesapeake Bay itself was produced by uh, an impact, and that these tectites, both the Texas bediocytes and the, uh, the green georgianites from Georgia, um, uh, were uh, uh, originated from the impact that uh, was created in the, Hudson, uh, in the uh, uh, Chesapeake Bay area. But um, uh, the problem is that the two tectites, uh, the Georgia and the Texas occurrence, are different. They're not quite the same. You would think if they had a common origin at the Chesapeake Bay area that they would be similar in color and similar in composition, and apparently they're not. Here's a, um, another thing about tectites that probably very few people know about, and it's this right here. Um, they ring. They ring. Uh, if you're uh, familiar with Gustav Holst's uh, suite, The Planets, which uh, it's rather neat, and you, you've probably heard parts of it. You hear Mars quite a bit, and you hear Jupiter, but you never hear Mercury. But if you listen to The Planets, Mercury has a lot of little dingy things in it. Gustav Holst wrote a lot of, uh, a lot of sounds that sound like this in the background of uh, Mercury and I'm sure was totally unaware of tectites. In fact, in 1919, I think when that when the planet suite was written, I don't think hardly anybody knew about tectites, including people in science. And it's really kind of a curiosity that uh, in uh, Mercury, in uh, the suite by Gustav Holtz, the planets, that there are these what sound like tectites in the background in Mercury. And probably if any planet has tectites on it, Mercury is as good as any, um, receiving them either from Venus or uh, perhaps from the Moon, um, where they uh, get attracted in toward the Sun and uh, land on the surface of the planet. But anyway, that's a curiosity that uh, you uh, might be interested in. Um, what you see on the screen here is a uh, type of tectite known as a moldavite, and they originate from uh, the Czech Republic, where they're uh, concentrated again, and like tectites usually are in distinct fields. And uh, they, um, among other things, are popular for being made into jewelry, rather pretty uh, green jewelry, almost emerald green uh, glass, which of course is what they are, but uh, they uh, are uh, because they, they possibly are from extraterrestrial sources, and uh, they uh, are uh, certainly involved in extraterrestrial phenomena impact. And you know, that brings up one thing with tectites. The general view right now is that they come from the Earth, and I, that seems to be pretty well accepted by most most uh, uh, astrogeologists and most geologists, and uh, but um, there's still arguments that they may be from somewhere else, including there's some literature recently that I saw that suggests that they may be from extrasolar sources, from outside of the solar system. I don't know, that seems a bit wild, but uh, it's possible. Uh, it's going to really take getting on the moon's surface and getting on the surface of planets with actual geologists or geology astronauts and exploring and seeing what really is going on the same way you do on the Earth because uh, some of this stuff is uh, really not clearly laid out. Not, it's not really clear what is going on. And, uh, tectite certainly is, certainly is one of them. On your left again you can see there's some uh, te Texas tectites, bediocytes, that um, are uh, one is uh, transmitted uh, light is uh, going through it, it shows a, kind of this, it's actually kind of a gray, um, smoky glass, and uh, you can see the small uh, uh, ablation surface on it as well. Uh, the uh, bediocytes, the Texas tectites are one of the rarer tectites, they're, uh, they're in a limited area, 
And the other one that uh, you see on the screen here is uh, a picture, not an actual specimen. They're even a lot rarer. It's a Georgia tectite, and they're green. Uh, they're green, kind of like Moldavites, which um, are made of green glass. And uh, Texas, um, Texas, Texas tectites and Georgianites are considered by some astrogeologists and some workers to have originated from the same impact. But the problem is they're both made of very different glass. The Texas tectites is made of a gray, smoky glass, and the um, Georgianites, the uh, Georgia tectites, are made of green glass. And it seems strange that the same source would produce two, two distinctly types of uh, two distinct types of glass uh, from the same impact site. That just doesn't quite make sense. What you see on the screen on your left there is uh, examples of what are called uh, Philippinites that uh, are the tectites that originate from the Philippines. And um, the thing is about them, they're, they're black like the Indochinites, but they're almost always round balls with a kind of a network of like little canals scattered through them. They always kind of remind me of the, the model of Mars that uh, they had before actual uh, imagery was available for Mars. And it, Mars had these imaginary canals on it and the, the um, uh, kind of veins or uh, arteries of uh, Philippinites kind of look similar to the, some of the Martian uh, models uh, early in the 20th century. But uh, uh, these are another weird group of tectites that originate in a strewn field that occurs in the Philippines. And um, uh, they're, because they're from a limited area, they're relatively rare. You don't see them very often. Um, as is the case of this one here, uh, I've never seen one of these. They're, um, they're known as um, uh, ivory coast tectites and they're found in West Africa in a very limited area uh, that was um, uh, opened up for mining about 40 years ago and a number of these were found and since then hardly any of them have turned up. Uh, a lot of that area of Ivory Coast is essentially jungle and uh, a lot of, some of it is being cleared for palm plantations and they might show up when they clear the land for that. That's an unfortunate thing in Sub-Saharan Africa, the clearing of big tracts of land for palm plantations. But uh, uh, to my knowledge, uh, Ivory Coast tectites have not uh, surfaced in the last 30 years or so, or 35, 40 years or so. But uh, they're again a, a very limited area, a very limited tectite field uh, in West Africa. On the screen here, uh, you can see uh, what is a sort of a disc-shaped, rather large uh, Indochinite that was picked up in a stream, and it's highly abraded um, when uh, tectites are exposed on the Earth's surface, and particularly when they find their way into streams, they get, uh, get eroded, and uh, um, the uh, ablation surface, which is very distinctive kind of gets uh, removed or at least gets altered. And this is one that has had that happen. These um, disc-shaped tectites are uh, 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 very interesting. And the extreme ones are uh, considered part of the Indochinite strewn field, but they occur in Australia. And they look like little flying saucers. They're very rare and very expensive, and I don't have one to show, but they uh, look like little, uh, little flying saucers that uh, uh, were reformed by um, massive ablation. Most of the tectite, when it re-entered the Earth's surface, uh, re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, was vaporized, and only part of it remained to form this uh, little flying saucer-shaped disk. On the screen on your left, uh, you'll see uh, some more Moldavites, uh, the Czech, Czechoslovakian or uh, uh, Czech Republic um, tectites, and um, these I, I think are one of the more in, one of, I think they're probably the prettiest tectites, the green color for one. And um, uh, I'll just show a couple of the uh, like a little slideshow on the to the left of me of Moldavites of uh, uh, these. Um, tectites from the Czech Republic. Look, look at that one there. There's one in the bottom there that kind of looks like a little dumbbell. They have a similar shape to the um, Indochinites, but uh, they're made of a, a clear green glass that's very different from the black glass of Indochinites. And here's some more Indochinites on the screen. I just can't get enough of them. 
But uh, I, uh, I find them very interesting. I really, they've always fascinated me, and I've probably overdone it with collecting, as I have a fair number of them. But uh, you can see some of these on the screen with that green glass that is very attractive. Uh, there's another group of them right there, uh, and uh, one with a, a little card that explains uh, the uh, occurrence of uh, moldavites, which are one of the tectites that they're pretty, we're pretty certain came from a known impact site. It's called the Reese Crater, and uh, it is also in the Czech Republic. And um, it's pretty certain that that is the source of these, uh, of these tectites. Uh, whereas uh, most of the other ones, uh, the actual impact site or the actual crater that was the source of the material of the tectites is not known. And the real mystery one is the source of the in large Indochinite field because that covers a, about a third of the planet and uh, uh, must have been a really big impact site. It must be a big uh, crater or once have, once have been a big crater and now be maybe partially covered by the ocean. But um, uh, that has never been found. There's no uh, real clear evidence of any impact site that could have been the source of the material for Indochinites. But with the, um, the uh, green uh, moldavites, uh, the Reese Crater is pretty certain to be the source of uh, the material that composes them. Uh, it agrees chemically with the composition of the uh, green glass of moldavites, and uh, everything seems to match up pretty well.